Hey everybody, welcome to another Feature Friday. So this is going to be part two of the graphical scheduling apps filmed right after part one. So part two is just going to cover the one application, the main application, the graphical scheduler. So hopefully that'll be of interest and let's get started. So this is the graphical scheduling app. And of course it is used to manage and schedule your work as well as the resources that you have available to you. You can have multiple schedules at any one time, and they are based on work orders, the assets, or even the location hierarchy that you have in the system. The Large Projects Graphical Scheduling application is used just for that. If you have 10,000 or more records that you're working with, that's the application that you want to use. From a feature functionality standpoint, the two applications are nearly identical. So where do you start? Well, once you launch the graphical scheduling application, the first thing you'll notice is the schedule tab. That's where you set up the metadata about the schedule. It's who owns it, uh, the calendar it's using, everything that would impact the, the scope of what this schedule is all about. And then, of course, you begin with your work queries. This is an important step. Of course, given that your work order records are in good shape, you have start dates and finish dates and durations and things like that, the very first thing that you do is identify the data source or data sources of the records that are going to come into the schedule. And you can see there on the screen, of course, it's called data source. You can have at least one. You may have more. And over on the right-hand side, you will see the where condition. This is where you decide which work order records come into this particular schedule. Perhaps it's just PMs, perhaps it's a certain date range, perhaps it's a certain uh, statuses, whatever you would like. But this is the key query that you're going to do in order to bring those records into the schedule. Once you've launched the schedule, the query actually runs. And you'll notice that on the left-hand side of the screen, you will have a list of your work orders and perhaps even the task under each work order, depending how things are set up. And then over on the right-hand side of the screen, you will have the beginnings of your Gantt chart, where you will see the tasks, their duration, and any dependencies that uh, exist. So when you start with the start date on any particular work order, you can go to Select Jump To, and the whole thing, the whole display, will jump to that particular date. Of course, the Gantt chart and the list has a zoom in and zoom out, so you're able to adjust what you see. At this point right here is an important uh, thing to consider, is if your work orders and or their tasks do not have a duration on them, or they're just zero, then you may have just a bunch of slivers uh, representing each task, and it's a little difficult to uh, click with the mouse and expand them. So one of the important things to start out with is to make sure you have a duration uh, for the work orders and or the task in the work order. It'll make it a lot easier to manipulate the Gantt chart. Of course, you can grab each of these tasks. You can manually extend or contract the task on the Gantt chart. When you do save and then commit the schedule, those changes you made will actually be changed on the work orders that came in from that query. As a bit of a side note, if you right-click on any of the work order lines, you will get a rather extensive menu available to you. You'll also notice that it's a bit the same as the menu you would have over in work order tracking application. But if you're looking for resources and what their availability is, you're able to right-click and then select that particular menu item, and you will get a display of what those resources are. You'll notice they can be assets, locations, items, tools. They may also be crews, labor, other things as well. One of the things you will notice in the Graphical View tab is across the top there's uh, quite a number of icons there. And it's definitely worthwhile to scroll through each one of those to understand what they do. Largely they control your view and your activities that you can do on the, uh, the Gantt chart there as well. And of course, like we mentioned, if you right click on any particular work order record, you get a rather extensive menu there as well. And of course, there is a scheduled dashboard that you can open up as well and get a much higher level view of all of the schedules that are in the system.
So here we have a little bit of an exercise. What I've done is I've opened up a particular schedule that shows me all work, uh, whatever that means in the context of that particular query that I have. And I've located the work order 1053, which is there to exercise a valve. And there's no task or anything uh, underneath this particular one. And I've zoomed into a February date, uh, particular the, the 2nd of February. And I was able to expand and contract uh, or even drag and drop that work order uh, itself over to the next day. I then went and saved the schedule and committed the schedule. And so now that work order is scheduled for a, a different day than originally planned. Very common thing to do, very simple activity. So another common situation is where you need to reschedule work that has not been completed when you had originally planned or scheduled it. So as a work order moves into field complete status or even a complete status, they may fall off of the schedule. Again, they're based upon the query that comes that runs when you originally launch a schedule. So the other work orders that are remaining, they may need to have their dates changed and their assignments changed as well, obviously pushing that work into the future. So again, a right click on the work order itself, go down to manage assignments, and you're able to make those changes as you need to. Another feature that is here in the Gantt chart, or actually on the record of the work order, are some date constraints. You'll notice those columns are the typical project management start no earlier than, finish no later than. If those fields have dates in them, then over on the right-hand side in the Gantt chart, you will see red lines uh, indicating those constraints. So this is a really good way of further refining the schedule of when the work really needs to start or really needs to be done by. And then, of course, you have a visual indication of those windows as well. So another nifty trick is while you're on the graphical view, if you select specific work orders, you can see on the left-hand side the checkbox is checked next to 1063 and 1090, and then do a filter, the resources view, which is not on this particular screen, but the resources view below the Gantt chart will only show those resources that are related to the selected work orders. When you want to clear the view and go back to your, your overall view, you just unclear the checkboxes and redo the filter. If you want to start doing some comparisons or want to save a particular point in time, there's an action called Create Snapshot. And it basically does just that. It takes a snapshot of your schedule. In essence, it's another schedule that is in the system. And you're able to use that uh, as a baseline, if you will, and then edit your schedules beyond that and compare and contrast between the two. A very useful function if you're looking to save some history. And finally, these three other tabs that are on in any particular schedule. So comparing scenarios is just that. You've got... Uh, one or more existing plans and you're able to view them from a work perspective or even a cost perspective. The cost and usage tab uh, is for this particular schedule. You're able to look at work costs. You can for forecast your PM costs as well, uh, as well as look at the uh, resource loading and availability. And then of course compliance, you're able to look and see how well this schedule is being adhered to uh, based upon the life cycles of the work orders that make up the particular schedule. Obviously, there's many, many more features to the graphical scheduling application itself, and you'll have to uh, learn more about that through the documentation or perhaps some of the training classes that are available. <music>